Welcome back to our video module on dynamics. So let's revisit our familiar cart problem. Seen this before where we've sent it in with some initial velocity and as a matter of fact for this problem let's go ahead and give it some velocity to the right. Finally we're going to add a force to the left. We'll call that some applied force and the magnitude of that force is F sine omega t sine alpha t. We'll use alpha t for clarity's sake. My question to you is what is the position as a function of time? Today we're going to combine all the information we've learned about mass, spring, dash pot systems, and we're going to add a force that oscillates with time. Let's get started. Our first step, you can probably already guess, is going to be to draw our free body diagram remember this does have some mass. We have some sort of shape right here with our normal force going up. We have some force of gravity going down and fortunately right now our main concern is just going to be in the x direction. So in tension we have some force of the spring and then we'll also have some sort of damping force right here, force damping. And to the left we'll have our applied force. Our equations of motion or our equation of motion is easy enough to set up. We know it's the sum of the forces equals whatever that mass is times V dot. We're going to do MX double dot. The sum of the forces are going to be, uh, let's keep our, let's keep our signs. It's going to be negative F sine alpha T plus negative KX. And we're going to assume as we have before that X is right here. The spring is at its rest position as soon as it hits the wall, time equals zero. Finally, our damping is going to be plus negative B X dot equals MX double dot. Now for solving these driven equations, we're going to set them up pretty much the same as we did with our undriven equations. We're going to get all of our X terms on the left and our um, force term on the right. Before we get started on the solution, let's also say that we're going to pretend this is an underdamped system. Now that said, we know that X as a function of time is going to be the homogeneous solution plus particul any particular solution. In this case, we'll have a particular solution. So we know what the homogeneous solution is. That's just the transient solution. That's what we've already worked with. And the overall equation, the homogeneous solution, is simply e to the negative bt over 2m times a cosine omega t plus b sine omega t. And of course, we can identify what A and B are based on initial conditions. We're going to skip that for right now. So here we have our homogeneous solution. Now let's write out a particular solution that corresponds with a sinusoidally varying force. Because it's sinusoidally varying and we have to look at the first, second, and third derivatives, we know the solution is going to be of the form, we'll say x particular, equals, and we used A and B over here, so we use C cosine, and we're going to use alpha T plus D sine alpha T, where alpha is the driving frequency. So now we have our particular and homogeneous solutions. For kicks, I'll write down what C and D are in something like this. So here are your C and D components, and we simply did this by um, plugging this form of the equation into our original equation, this one right here, and separated the sines and the cosines, and we end up with two simultaneous equations that are fairly simple enough, but you can see the results are just a mess. So now that we have this complete handful of a homogeneous solution and a particular solution, with the right initial conditions and the right knowledge about the system, we can identify what the position is as a function of time. Before we jump any more into this math, into the math, 
Let's take a look at what some systems might look like and see if we can learn something from it. I see we're pretty much out of time. Let's call it quits for now and we'll rejoin in the next video.